All right. This is the moment that we have been waiting for. Yes. Everything we have done for area and perimeter so far has been leading to this. I'm going to give you a heads up. We're going to try to do this video as quickly as we can, but if we get a little bit over 10 minutes, you got to sit and watch because this stuff is important. Okay. Yes. All right. So we are going to do area and perimeter of composite figures. Da, da, da. Okay, first we got to know what composite figures are, or this does not really help us. Composite figures are two or more shapes that are put together in some type of way. Okay, you can probably already see, if you have this paper, you can probably already see some examples. I could literally be sticking a rectangle and another or a square together. I could be sticking a triangle and a semicircle together. That would be very bizarre, but I could do it. <laughs> Any two shapes that I could stick together, that means that is a composite figure. And we're going to have some steps, and they're written here for you. If you need to take a screenshot of this or write these down or check your notes, this is going to help you when you're working by yourself. We're not going to sit and go through like number one, number two, number three, um, but they're going to help you later. Are you ready, Miss Voss? I'm ready. Okay. So a local hospital is going to retile the floor in one of their waiting rooms. The room is pictured here. How much tile will they need? Well, if they're talking about tiling a floor, could I would have to use my hand to cover this entire thing. So that means we are looking for the area of these two locations. Okay, it's actually one location, but like Miss Benson said, we're going to draw a line right there and we're going to have one rectangle plus another rectangle. So that's what we're going to draw here. We're going to say it's going to ask for the area of a rectangle, this one, then we're going to have to add the area of a second rectangle. Okay, and that's going to give us our total area that needs to be retiled. All right, so we're going to write the shapes and the formula. Well, I've put that right there. So now we're just going to go ahead and do formulas. Okay, so if I know I have an area of a rectangle, that means I'm going to do length times width. Then I'm going to add the area of a second rectangle, which is also length times width. Then when we add them together, we'll get the total area for what we need. All right. But first things first, we have to see what information we have and what information maybe we need to figure out. Well, I have this length here which is 22, so I can call that the length. And then this up here is the width, and that'll take care of that rectangle right there. So let's do that first. That would be, and I'm gonna use Desmos, but for now I'm just writing it out so I know what's happening. Plus, and then I have to look at the length and the width for the second rectangle. So I see this right here, it's the longer side. So I'm gonna call it, and make the line a little different, the length for this rectangle, which is 24. Then, oh no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I gotta find the width for this guy. I gotta find the width, I don't know how long it is. I'm gonna have to do some math to figure that out. So let's use our brains, you ready? If we know this entire side is 22, we know we need this, which is the same as this, right? If we know this entire side is 22 and that little extra piece is seven, couldn't we find this over here or this piece here by doing 22 minus seven? 
I think we can. And I'm going to use Desmos to make sure I get that right. So it is 15. So 15 is my width for my second rectangle. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my formula in here. I'm going to do one rectangle at a time, length times width. Then I'm going to put in L equals and I'm going to put in W equals. And I'm going to go back to my main screen. So I'm going to work on my first rectangle first. My length is 22. My width is 13. And that gave me 286. Now I'm going to do this second rectangle here. My length was 24. My width was 15. And that gives me 360. Okay, so when I add those two things together, 286 plus 360, I get a grand total of 646 feet squared. Pretty neat, huh? That's kind of awesome. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. And it looks like a lot, but really if you follow those steps that we showed you on that very first page, you're going to be set. All right, yeah. Ms. Benson, are you ready to do oh, one? I'm ready. Let's get it again. Okay, let's see what the next one looks like because all of these are super different from each other, which is why you just got to kind of hang in there and watch them. All right, this shape looks totally different. It says the school librarian is making some decorations. The decorations are created from a square. Oh, they're telling me the shapes in this one. A square and an equilateral triangle, which is a very fancy way of saying that all of the sides are equal. Okay, in fact, it almost spells the word equal right there in it. Not quite. Don't tell your English teachers, but it's close. But it's very close. Okay. <laughs> If she's making these decorations, how much ribbon does she need to go around each decoration? So if I am going around, that means that I am looking for perimeter, okay? I am going to go around this entire shape, all right? In this one, it's not as important what the two shapes are, but I know that they're a square and I know that they're a triangle, so I can put that down here if I want to. But we don't super need that information because the way that you find perimeter, if you think back several videos ago, the way you find perimeter is add all of the sides. And the only way this can get a little bit tricky, I'll show you in just a second. So let's go around and let's add all of our sides of this decoration. And I'll just start right here, okay? Let's just talk about what the perimeter is. It's when I go around the outside of a shape, all the way around the outside, and then I close it up, but I do not include this line in the middle. So maybe, and I don't think this is good English either, but maybe this should say add all of the outsides because it's only the ones on the outside of the shape. All right, so that's all I gotta do. I gotta go around and add some numbers together and we've totally done that before, um, but I gotta figure out what all of my sides are first. So if this side is nine and it has this little mark in it and this side has the same mark, that means that this side is also nine. And this side over here is nine. And that one has the same mark. It's also nine. And one more time, that one over there is nine. So when I find the perimeter, I'm just gonna go around and add all of these nines together. So I can write that on here, just so that if you look back later, you'll have it in your notes. But I have five sides and each side is nine inches. I know you could do five times nine, but I'm just gonna add. We're doing it in Desmos. It's not like it takes a lot of work to do anyways. Oops, oopsies. And I get a total 
of 45 inches. So our librarian needs 45 inches of ribbon. It says Mark is cleaning this window. How much glass was used to create the shape? So they're talking about how much glass. So I think we're looking for area here. Oh my goodness. This one's gonna be kind of crazy. This one is gonna be kind of crazy because I think if you look at it, I see a trapezoid and a semicircle. Let's just start by writing things down. We know we're looking for area, okay? And it says write the shapes in the formula. So I'm going to write semicircle, okay, plus a trapezoid. Okay, so those are the two things we're gonna have to figure out. And when we take that semicircle, the area of the semicircle, and add the area of the trapezoid, we're gonna be in great shape. So the area of a circle, if you remember, is pi r squared, but that semicircle means, you need to put that half in front of it, okay? And to that, we're gonna add the area of a trapezoid. The area of a trapezoid is one half times its height times its base one plus its base two. All right, guys, this is Ms. Benson in editing and we seem to have lost a complete clip so take a minute, check your answer against what you see in this picture. If you have any questions at all, please just reach out to your teachers. All right, you got this, and we'll see you in the next one.